You can uh, see a wire glow or a candle burn. Light and heat are often produced together in chemical reactions. Can you produce light without heat? Yes, you can, and we call it cool light. So we're going to do the cool light demonstration on a large scale. We have two solutions, one of which contains luminol and sodium hydroxide. The other one contains potassium ferrocyanide and hydrogen peroxide. And if we can take the lights down, and on the count of three, Scott, one, two, three. Whoa! Slower. This reaction is actually very old. It goes back to about 1911 or so. The discovery of chemiluminescence, which is the production of light from a chemical reaction. All right. So let's talk a little bit about chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence is the production of light from a chemical reaction. There are many different types of luminescence, all of which involve the production of light. You can have bioluminescence, which we call the firefly reaction, which is actually extremely similar to this one. Whenever you have chemiluminescence, you have the product of the chemical reaction is produced in an excited state. And, of course, we know that when electrons, molecules, are in an excited state, because the electrons are in higher energy levels, the way that that molecule or electron relaxes back down to the ground state, I like to say that, we need to relax back down to the ground state, is by releasing light energy in the process. We know that uh, chemical reactions require, always require an activation energy, always. And sometimes when it requires that activation energy, it also produces the product in an excited state, in a higher, energy, higher electron energy state. The structure of luminol is it's an organic molecule. It's not really that complicated, so a lot of people never draw it because they think it is. What we have here is we have a benzene ring and two carbonyl or carboxyl groups attached to it, C double bond O, and then NH groups attached to those carbonyl carbons. And so this makes it a hydrazide. And there is an amino group here. We said that the other reactants involved here were hydrogen peroxide, sodium hydroxide to make it basic, and we had a catalyst which was ferrocyanide ion, FeCn6, 3 minus. The re, uh, base, and all of these reactants are required for chemiluminescence to be observed. The sodium hydroxide is needed to basically remove these two hydrogens from the luminol. This is the structure of luminol, which is the most famous chemiluminescent substance. And so the sodium hydroxide removes two hydrogen ions to produce a dianion. That dianion is then oxidized by means of the hydrogen peroxide in the presence of the iron catalyst, or the iron 3 ion catalyst. The product of the reaction, and I'm going to draw it down there so that, down here so that I have plenty of room, is a phthalate ion in which those nitrogens have been converted to oxygens, and we still have that amino group here on the benzene ring. That hasn't changed. And as I said, the requirement in chemiluminescence is always that the product is produced in the excited electron state 
because of the chemical reaction. So that symbol there means that it's excited. And when that relaxes back down to the ground state, it releases a photon of energy. The other products of this reaction are water. And one that you'd never ever talk about, but if we look at this and we see some nitrogens here and they've been replaced by oxygens, and I never noticed this until I looked very carefully once, it turns out the other product is a gas, it is nitrogen gas. And if you look very, you know, you're always focused so much on that blue, cool, light fluorescent or chemiluminescence that you observe that you don't look at the solution, but you do actually see bubbles in it due to the production of nitrogen gas. So this is probably the most famous uh, chemiluminescence reaction, but it's important to realize that it's, it's part of a broader picture of luminescence in general, which is the production of light. You can have production of light by a biological reaction in, a bio, in an organism, such as the firefly. Um, and that use, utilizes something called luciferin, which is structurally very similar to luminol. You can have the production of light in flame tests, that's pyroluminescence, uh, and also uh, some phosphorus materials and so on produce that. And chemiluminescence, which is the production of light energy in a chemical reaction, cool light. Thank you.